Uh, you may have heard of um, different variants of shogi. There's variants of size 2x3 all the way up to 36x36. And there's actually a three-dimensional shogi. It's called space shogi. In this video, I'll be talking about quite a novel concept, one-dimensional shogi, which was invented by a mathematician, Jonathan Rutherford. So um, the first variant that he introduced had uh, 17 cells. It's 1 by 17. And you may recognize all of these pieces. These are pieces from regular shogi. And the way Ruther Rutherford uh, extended the rules for these pieces for one dimension is to pr pretend that we're moving both dimensions in the same in the same direction. So a pawn always moves forward one in shogi. So in one dimensional shogi, that just corresponds to one space on the board. The lance can move forward any number of spaces, so that's extended here. So any number of un unobstructed spaces, if it were here, it could move either here, 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 or it could make it capture. Actually, it looks like he, uh, ex he limits the number of spaces some of these pieces can move, and the lands can move one to eight unobstructed spaces. The bishop is the interesting one because uh, you may recall in shogi or in chess, the bishop always stays on the same color square that it, start, it starts out in, especially in chess where the, the squares are actually colored. So what happens is it moves every other square and as many unobstructed ones as possible. So say um, these pieces are here. The bishop could move here because this doesn't count. This is a different diagonal compared to the one that the bishop is on. The bishop is on the diagonal that is every other square from it. So it can move here. It can make this capture here, but it cannot move here because it's being blocked by this pawn. The knight, in shogi, the knight, unlike the, ch the chess knight, it can only move forward two spaces and then across either direction by one. So in one-dimensional shogi, we combine that so the knight can move three spaces forward as its only move. The silver general, because in, in uh, traditional shogi, it can move diagonal uh, one space. So since it's moving backwards and to the diagonal by one, we combine that for uh, moving backwards two. So if the, if the silver were here, it can move here. And in, in traditional shogi, the silver can move forward one or diagonal one. So in one-dimensional shogi, it corresponds to forward one or forward two. The king can move... Oh, by the way, the silver general can jump over another piece when it's moving forward by two. The king in this game can only move forward because of the... Because the game is already so small, this prevents the game from going on and on. So it, it forces the king movements to more or less be permanent toward the opponent's side. Um, the drop rules are more interesting. There are um, restrictions. You can't drop to give check or checkmate. But apparently you can drop to give a stalemate. The reason for that is... Um, Actually, if you could not drop to give a stalemate, the game would be kind of ill-defined because then the stalemate is defined by not having any legal moves. But if the legal moves involve drops that cannot give stalemate, it gives a recursive definition. So that's, that's why it's, it's prohibited. The pieces uh, must be dropped at least two spaces in front of your king. So if your king is here... You're not allowed to drop pieces here or here, so it has to be at least two spaces in front. Apparently, it can also be behind your opponent's king. And um, just like in Micro Shogi, every time your piece makes a capture, it promotes, and then if it makes another capture, it demotes back. And some of these pieces are also familiar from other Shogi variants. So the silver general promotes the gold general, which follows that same rule. So it can move one or two forward or one back for the same reason we discussed earlier. This is actually a cannon. 
and uh, like like in Chinese chess, it, it it moves like a rook, but um, it captures by jumping over exactly one piece. This is a go between, and uh, it moves just like the go between in large shogi variants like Chu Shogi, one forward or one backwards. This is the reverse chariot. It can move one to four on, on unobstructed spaces forward or backwards and capture similarly. And this is the phoenix. And it can move two or three spaces, jumping over pieces if necessary, forward or backwards. So it can jump over that. It can make that capture. And similarly for backward. There's also a uh, 21 by 1 variant of shogi, but this is, I'm not very familiar, this, this, this has actually um, two different kinds of cannons, a silver cannon and a gold cannon. I'm not familiar with how these pieces move. Uh, the, the difference between the two is how they move. This, the silver cannon can actually move by jumping over a piece, while the gold cannon only captures by jumping over pieces. Actually, it may be the other way around, but you get the idea. And uh, it turns out um, Rutherford apparently played around with different uh, versions of boards and piece movement rules. And he determined that there was a trap um, in 21 by 1 where the second player to move, or as we traditionally call white in shogi, um, has an advantage after four or five moves. So the, he's considering making it 22 by 1. Uh, there's a parity issue because some of these pieces move exactly an even number of spaces or an odd number of spaces. Uh, maybe I'll go through the details of these pieces in the next video.